Sometimes you want to build packages or get applications that are available in the source code but are not available in pre-compiled build packages. So in times like this, you have to go and find them, download them, extract them, build them, and install them. So let's look at how we would do this. So I have a web browser here, and I want to get the GNU Go, well, the GNU Chess game. So if I look for GNU Chess, I can find this GNU Chess project. So I click on this, and I want to download it. So I scroll down, and I find a link. I click on the link, and then I look at a bunch of different pieces of information. There are all these files to download. So if you look for the highest number, usually that's the latest, you can see there is a GNU chess 6.2.4.tar.gz. And there's another one right here, 624tar.gz sig. So the sig would be a signature to verify that it's the correct code and the tar gz file, which is much larger, is our actual application. So I'm gonna download this in right here, and I'm gonna save it. And it will save into the downloads directory of whichever user I am logged in as. So I'm logged in as the root user. Now, if you're logged in as a non-root user, you might possibly run into a situation where it downloads in that user's directory, but you might have switched over to your root and maybe you can't find it as easily. It's a little more tricky if you are logged in a different user than you are logged in as if you switch over. So I'm going to go into the downloads directory and take a look around. And I see there is a GNU chess 6.2.4.tar.gz. I'm going to extract that with a tar xvfz. So the x is for extract, v is for both after files, and z is for the gz compression. GNU chess expands, and I take a look at the directory again. I can see that now I have the file still, but I also have this newly created directory, and I'm going to go into that directory. So cd GNU chess, and I take a look around in here as well. So this is the source code. Um, inside of the source code, you can see there is a file called install. Usually you want to look for a, a file called either install or one called readme in all capital letters. So if I take a look at the installed file, it has instructions on how to build the package. You can see that it tells me to use a configure script. It says a make and make install. So these three commands would build the package. And there are other options explained down here below. Um, you can also look in the readme file. The readme file has instructions, tells you to look in the install file, and tells you where to get more information. All right, another hint you have is if you see a configure file in your directory, that usually means you can run the configure file and build packages. If you see the make file am and make file in type things, that usually means that your configure program will generate a make file. So you get a you get a feel for what is there and how to build it. So let's do our configure. Because this is my current directory, and my current directory is not my path, I have to tell it which directory, which is my current directory, and then the name of the file configure. Configure will search through and verify that I have important things such as my GCC uh, compiler and other things. So I've already installed a GCC compiler. It's already there. And it checks to see other things, see what libraries are built, what things are available, and makes decisions on how it's going to compile it. You can also see that it creates this make file. And then it creates make files in the source directory and other places as well. So when I run the make command, it will build it. So let's take a look at the, the files here. You can see that now there is this make file that just got created. Not the same as these two earlier ones, but this one is the actual instructions for building the application. So if I look at that file briefly, 
you can see that the make file has instructions on how to build all the code here. All right, so now I'll use the make command. The make command reads the make file and then starts generating code. You can see that it is going into including pieces from the SRC directory and it's building packages and putting them somewhere. Now, if you wanted to look for them, you could look around, you can see what's being put where. Um, it's actually using the G++ compiler, so it must be written in C++. All right. And so you can see it created the GNU chess application. Usually uh, there are other directories such as a, a, a bin directory where they create all the binary files. Um, this one, I don't know where it created everything, but I assume it's in here somewhere. If we scroll up through this, we can see that there's nothing really changed in this directory. So it's probably done in the other directory. So let's take a look at the SRC directory. You can see in the SRC directory, there are a few applications that have been created. GNU Chess, GNU Chess U, and GNU Chess X. We don't know what they are, but we assume they are part of the package. And they'll probably do some pretty interesting things. Now I'm still in my radio directory. Now I can do a make install. Now, for the make install to work, you usually have to be logged in as root, and it will copy files over to somewhere where it will be in your path. So now it's copied over these GNU chess applications over. You can see it's created a few other links. Um, yeah. Now, if I type in GNU chess, You can see that there are applications and I can run the GNU chess program. Now the GNU chess program is originally written as a backend for some other graphical applications. So everything right here is command line. And if you want to play chess this way, well, first of all, good luck. Um, second of all, um, you get to enter in text and play the game that way. So you could do something like a, B2 to B3, and you can see that my pawn moved forward. The computer's thinking, and then it will do its move as well. So it did some move and moved at night. Anyway, this is how you would build an application. Probably don't want to be playing it this way, but other applications are sometimes a little more complex. Sometimes you have to go out and find libraries and add them. But this is the general idea of how to build an application from source code.